Hello, boys and girls. This is Chapter 8 of Wish. On Saturday, Howard was going to help me look for Wishbone, but first I had to go shopping with Bertha. I haven't been to Asheville in ages, she said, getting behind the wheel of Gus's old car. It started with a rumble, sending puffs of black smoke drifting out of the tailpipe and floating over the yard. As we wound our way down the mountain and onto the highway, Bertha chattered nonstop. She told me about the time she and Gus went camping and a baby bear got into their cooler and stole their hot dogs. Can you believe that, she said, a bear eating hot dogs. She talked about how much she hated snakes and how when a tiny brown garter snake got in the house. Once, she stayed with her friend Joe Neal for nearly a week till Gus swore on a Bible that it was gone. And she could hardly stop laughing long enough to tell me about the time some guy named Arthur Kruger got drunk and lost his false teeth at the church picnic. I didn't even want to think about where those teeth would turn up, she said, wiping her eyes. I didn't eat any more potato salad after that, that's for sure. Finally, I figured I'd have to interrupt her, so I did. But what about you and Mama? I asked. What do you mean? Tell me something about y'all. Um, well, uh, let, let's, let's see now. I waited watching her face, seeing her search for just the right thing to tell me. When I was about 10, she said, so let's see, Carla would have been about seven. We spent the whole summer making yarn bracelets to sell so we could buy fish for an aquarium our uncle gave us. Yarn bracelets? I wondered how come Mama never showed me how to make yarn bracelets. Then Bertha went on, this mean boy who lived across the street from us threw every one of those bracelets into the hickory nut tree in our front yard, way up in the branches so we couldn't get them down. She shook her head. Isn't that so mean? What'd y'all do? Well, that's why I'm telling you this story, because it's so like Carla. She said she stomped over to that boy and bit him on the hand so hard he hollered like she'd cut his hand off with a butcher knife. Then he ran home crying while she hollered cuss words at him. Bertha chuckled. That girl had some kind of temper, she said. A temper? Maybe I didn't get my temper from Scrappy after all. Maybe I got my temper from Mama. I hesitated, but then I decided to just go for it. How come y'all stopped seeing each other? I asked, hoping maybe this time she'd give me a better answer than she had before. Bertha stared out at the road ahead. Well, you know, when we got to be teenagers, we were so busy with this and that and the other thing. Then she dropped out of high school, and the next thing I knew, she was a hightailing it to Raleigh. How come y'all don't see each other now? Bertha pressed her lips together and shot me a look out of the corner of her eye. It's kind of complicated, Charlie, she said. There it was again. Another not very good answer. So we drove on in silence until we got to Asheville. At the mall, I couldn't help but think about Jackie. She and I used to spend all day at the mall, wandering from store to store, trying on crop tops and mini skirts that we were never allowed to have. Picking out earrings we would buy if our ears were pierced, spritzing fancy perfume on each other from the samples at the cosmetics counter. Let's go to Sears and look for Sunday school dresses, Bertha said. So we shopped all morning, and by the time we headed back to Colby, I had two new dresses and a lavender cardigan sweater. Bertha thought one of the dresses might be too short for church, but she bought it anyway. When we got home, Howard was sitting in a lawn chair by the garden, watching Gus do some repairs to a fence. Hi there, Bertha called. Howard walked his up-down walk over to the car as I started getting out my shopping bags from the back seat. Hey, he said to Bertha. Then he turned to me and said, I drew a map. What for? To help us look for Wishbone. He took a piece of folded-up notebook paper out of his pocket to show me. I figured we'd mark the places we look and well, that'll help us keep track. I shrugged. Okay. Bertha reached for the shopping bags. I'll take those inside, she said. Then me and Hired headed back toward the road, peering into tangled shrubs and squinting into the dark woods along the way. 
Howard thought we should check the path where we'd seen him yesterday. I bet he hangs out there a lot, he said. Maybe. I pushed some tall weeds aside and jumped over the shallow ditch that ran along the edge of the road. But Gus said he's liable to be anywhere, I added. We looked and looked, climbing all over fallen trees and pushing through prickly vines. But after a while, we were hot and tired and hadn't seen one single sign of wishbone. So Howard whipped out his map and a stubby pencil and marked the places that we'd looked. And we decided to call it a day. The next day, I marched into Sunday school in my new dress and plopped right down next to Audrey. I said, hey, but she acted like I was invisible. I guess she forgot I was part of her church family. First, we had played that Bible detective game again, and Howard added to his collection of Bible books. I couldn't get over all the stuff he knew about the Bible. What was Moses' brother's name? How many times a day did ravens bring food to Elijah? Audrey waved her hand almost as much as Howard did, jangling her bracelets and a-going, I know, I know. After that, Mrs. Mackey told us we were going to decorate the bulletin board in the fellowship hall, and it would be called our Garden of Blessings. We'll be making a garden of flowers to show our many blessings, she said. Then she explained that we could make construction paper flowers and write one of our blessings on each one. I confess I wasn't too clear exactly what that meant, but I followed everybody else and got colored paper and glue and scissors. I worked real slow, hoping I could see what somebody else was doing. Sure enough, Audrey finished her first flower, a big yellow daisy. Then she used a blue crayon to write on one of the petals, my family. My stomach squeezed up and my face felt hot. I put my hands in my lap so nobody could see them shaking. That yellow daisy laid there on the table in front of me, reminding me that I did not belong here, letting me know that even though I was here in church in my new dress, I did not have a blessing. May I be excused? I said to Mrs. Mackey, but I didn't even wait for her to answer. I hurried out of that room and went outside to the parking lot. But before I had time to start feeling sorry for myself, something good happened. I saw a red bird, a bright red cardinal on the telephone line across the street. I closed my eyes, spit three times, and made my wish. And that is chapter eight of Wish. Good night, boys and girls.